You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. I'm Stephen Cabral, and I'm happy that you've joined us today for our first Cabral host call of the weekend. Today, we get to go through a lot of our community's questions that have built up over the past week or two. And we have everything from thyroid to food sensitivities to genetic testing. What else do we have today? Looking specifically at when to use prebiotics or probiotics, talking about natural strep throat remedies, so many different questions to go on and on about. So we're going to get right into it today. And as always, if you have any questions for the Cabral house call, what you can do is just go over to stephencabral.com forward slash ask Cabral. That is where we do answer all of these weekend house calls. They're usually about two weeks or so to get to your question. As always, just tune in every single weekend to the Cabral concept and you'll get your answer coming up. We can't tell you exactly which show it's going to be on, but it's always answered in about two weeks or so. The other thing I would say is, and it's going to answer this first question, is that if you have a specific question about when your product is being shipped or whatever it might be, that's not for the Ask Cabral. That's where you go directly to support at drcabraldetox.com or either support at stephencabral.com. Either one is totally fine. They'll go to the same place and we'll be happy to help you out. But if you submit it there, I might not get your question for a week or two because that's we just go straight down the list and these are our community questions. So you always have access to our support Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're always happy to answer your question. Just remember, the fastest way to get an answer is just to email support. Not these personal questions. Those have to be added to the Cabral House Call. Just remember, we have thousands of people listening to the podcast, thousands of people on social media. I mean, I would honestly love to, but I have no idea how that's possible. If anybody knows how I can answer hundreds of direct messages per day on Instagram, Facebook, and then sort through all of this, let me know because I'm open to it. But the best we can do right now is whenever you have a quick question you need an answer to, same day, just go to support at stephencabral.com or support at drcabraldetox.com. And when you want your health question answered, whether it's wellness, weight loss, anti-aging, Whatever it might be, feel free to send that right to stephencabral.com forward slash ask Cabral. Okay, let's get right into the show today. The first one is from Yanina, and her question is, hi, doctor, could you please send me the link of the podcast where you explain how to get back to incorporating carbs after a low carb diet. We checked the hibernation low thyroid and it is what my mom is suffering from. Her thyroid is 1.5. Thanks. Okay. So the hibernation show, what happens to your body is it starts to slow down the metabolism. I talk about exactly how that happens and that was on episode 425. So as always, just go to stephencarral.com and then just do forward slash and then the podcast number. In this case, it's four. 25. And you can always just go to stevencabral.com forward slash podcasts. Just scroll down the page. We made it really easy. It's just line by line. All the podcast from zero. So from zero, 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 all the way to today's show, which is 470 today. Okay. So today's show is 470. So we have 470 shows. So lots of information in there. Now the show you need that you're referring to is actually episode 411. So 411, I talk about how to go on a low carb diet to work on weight loss, whatever it might be. But then also understanding that that's not a great long-term solution and how to slowly transition off of that without gaining all the way back. That was a very popular show. I'm sure we'll do that as a bonus episode in the future as well. Okay. Just one more thing to keep in mind. If your mom's thought thyroid is 1.5. You didn't mention what that was referring to, but if your mom's thyroid is a 1.5 in terms of TSH, that's actually perfect. So you just have to know if it, is that referring to T4, T3, TSH? I'm assuming it's not TPO, but if it's 1.5, it should be between 0.5 and 2.5. And I'll do another whole show on thyroid as well, because I know it's such a popular topic as well. So 
1.5, if it was a TH, would actually be, TSH would actually be perfect. Okay, let's move on to the next question. This one is from Belinda. She wrote in, hi there, I would like to order from the online store, but I live in the Republic of Ireland. Is it possible to have supplements shipped? Question mark. The form doesn't let me complete my order due to no available shipping method for Ireland. Thanks. Yes, Belinda, this is something that we've been working on we just opened up the online store actually less than a year ago. And we did that obviously because when we're doing the podcast, people say, well, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do next? Where am I supposed to get these products? So it was a lot of work on our end and we were super excited to be able to do that and share that with people. But it's all a slow process. Keep in mind, and this is an excuse. I'm not saying that at all, but we are a... I don't know if it's small, but we're an offline clinic and clinical practice that does 20,000 appointments per year for wellness, weight loss, anti-aging. And it's just taken a little time to transition online. So we now service the UK, Canada, and the United States. And we can ship labs to the US and the UK and then Canada, but we can't ship all products then to other countries as well. However, the good news is this. We just got word from our fulfillment house. Remember, we can't ship everything from our wellness center. We actually ran out of manpower. That that was just not a possibility. Okay. So I just got word literally this week that in about two weeks, so we're still trying to automate the process with our fulfillment house. I don't want to bore you with the details. I don't even like the details, to be honest. And I have a great team. Honestly, I have a great team that that does all of this for me because I can't see people and do podcasts and write and do videos and write my book and all these things and know this type of stuff as well. And so again, I don't claim to know everything. I, I really focus on what I do well. And I think that's, you know, trying to be a good functional medicine, naturopathic, you know, clinician, but a great team helps me with all these things. And so now we're going to be able to ship to Canada, the UK, Australia, which is a huge, great opportunity for us because so many people want us to be able to ship there. New Zealand, Germany, France, Spain, Belgium, the Netherlands, Sweden, Finland, Switzerland, Denmark, Ireland. So the Republic of Ireland is there. Portugal, Israel, Italy, Singapore, Croatia, Estonia, Gibraltar, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malaysia, and Malta. So those are the new countries we're going to be able to ship to. I have no idea why those are the specific countries, but that is where our fulfillment house is able to ship to right now using international shipping. So in about two weeks, we'll have that up on the website and almost everything will be able to be shipped. We won't be able to ship labs internationally because we can do ship the hair tissue mineral analysis internationally, but not the urine and saliva based samples just because of the time that won't get it back to the lab in time. But pretty much all the products, supplements, we'll be able to. Certainly my books, we're certainly able to do that. And um, I don't think CBD oil can be shipped internationally. Unfortunately, that's still a US-based product only. Okay, let's move on. So hopefully that answers your question, Belinda. But two weeks, two more weeks, let's say let's say June 1st. That'll be our goal to shoot for. Okay, Kimberly's up next. Hi, Stephen. Love your show. Listen to it every day. I have a question. I'm a sperm donor baby and do not have any information on who my biological father is. No health history, no cultural history, nothing. I'm wondering if you know of any way I could possibly get some insight into my health background. Would you recommend a genetic profiling test or any others? Looking for as close to comprehensive as I can get. Thanks. All right, Kimberly. Yeah, this is a very easy straightforward answer. Your genetics don't change no matter what. They really don't. Your expression of those genetics certainly change, but the actual code does not. Now, my answer will be different 25, 30 years from now when we start to be able to edit our genetic code, but we can't right now. And so without a doubt, the number one lab to run is the one that we have on the stephencabal.com forward slash store website and just click on anti-aging. When you click on anti-aging, you're going to see the genetics DNA test. It's a simple saliva test. It can be done anywhere in the world. So this is another one where I just said, you know, can only service some countries or certain things. Well, this genetic test can be done literally any in the world. The lab that we use, again, we don't run any of the labs ourselves. We just have great partners. And again, we simply pick best in category. There is no better lab in the world than this lab out of Australia that gives you a 100 page health report. Not like one of these little 23 and me that you need to send through some other software. No, this is a 100 page, 99 page report just on you, your genetics. I had it run myself. I've done about, I don't even know how many, half a dozen or so others. This is without a doubt, hands down the best one. And it's the only lab test that you can, you purchase online where you actually do the consultation with me. All the other labs, I actually review your personal lab results. And then one of our health 
coaches takes you through my recommendations. So it's great either way, but this is one that I like to take people through. I have a really big passion with genetics and it's because I didn't truly get well until my mentor in my mid twenties made me aware of certain genetic mutations and issues I had within my genes that predisposed me to the inflammation and the the autoimmune based issues I was having. And I would have to correct those in order to really go on to live the healthiest life that I could. And so that was remarkable. She's the one who pushed me to my specific naturopathic path. And she also pushed me to combine that with functional medicine, Ayurvedic medicine. Yeah, she was fantastic. And so that's what I'm trying to do for you. If you want your ancestry, then you can run an ancestry test, but they're totally different. Like 23andMe, it tries to to do the both. Uh, I just, my opinion, it's not a a medical test. What I would do is just check out that one. We'll put in the show notes today. Plain and simple, we'll link up genetic test. Just go to stephencabral.com forward slash 470. I'll link that up for you. Okay, Jen is up next. I just listened to a podcast where you do not recommend probiotics while healing and sailing the gut. Why is that? Okay, Jen, great question. My recommendation first is go back and listen to previous podcasts. I try to build off of all the different shows. It's not like you can't just step in today's show and get comprehensive answers. It's not that at all. You don't need to listen to the prerequisites. However, if you can go back and listen from episode, let's say 100 on, you're going to get so much education. I really believe that. And and it's only because I've had probably like 25% of our listeners are personal trainers, nutritionists, registered dietitians, medical doctors, acupuncturists, yoga instructors. Like it's just like everyone. And they say that this is more than I've learned in textbooks or whatever it might be. And all I'm trying to do is this, is I've read a lot and I'm trying to distill that information into usable chunks for both practitioners and for everyday people. You know, that's just the bottom line. And that's, that's, if I'm able to do one thing, it's that. It's just read books, take the information, remember what I read before, and then surmise that together. And it's also unbiased. I don't care who's right. All I care about is helping people. That's it. So if all of a sudden we find a phenomenal pharmaceutical drug and it doesn't affect the rest of the person, then I'm going to promote that. There are no dogmatic views. That's it. And I just think that that's one of the ways in which I can help people is that I will do whatever is best for that person in both the short and long term, but I will not sacrifice short term results for long term detrimental effects. Okay. So that's why obviously I don't use any pharmaceutical drugs. Plus we have no need to, absolutely no need to in my practice. Okay. So Jen, let me actually get back to your question, a little tangent there. And yes, that's true. We absolutely do not use probiotics in our practice for SIBO, Crohn's, colitis, Candida. I'll probably mention them a few different times. IBS, anything gut based. And that's because I've been through all this myself, struggled with it for like a decade, and finally figured it out. And I figured it out by understanding the human anatomy and physiology of how the body functions. So the plain and simple is this if you have bacterial overgrowth and you have yeast overgrowth and your gut is already full to the max, Would adding more bacteria then help or hurt the situation? And in more cases than not, it hurts the situation. If you have minor overgrowth, well, then adding some probiotics, the certain strains, will actually help because it will force out those, but not when they've already taken a foothold. And what we also found, and I'll tell you, I don't know any other practitioner, and believe me, I read a lot, I listen a lot, who is saying this specifically, we do not put colon-based strains of bacteria through the mouth that have to go through the small intestine and have finally wake, end up in the large intestine. I don't know anyone else who is saying that besides us. I honestly believe if we specialize in one thing, we do a lot, but if we specialize in one thing, it's gut health. So what we do is the first month, uh, it's a 12-week protocol. It works fantastically well. I mean, believe me, we have people come in with loose stool, diarrhea 12 to 20 times a day. They can only eat six different foods. They throw up after every meal. They're always bloated. They always have gas. You name it. You know, we, we work with it. And so we work with the most sensitive of the sensitive and this approach works. It just works. And so what we do is we wipe everything out. We wipe it out. And then after we wipe it out, we start with just one single strain of bacteria, small intestinal based. And then after that, we add five strains. And then after that month three, we add a few more strains 
as well. And so it's just very systematic. And so that's why. And we certainly don't use prebiotics either because why would we feed yeast and bacteria when we're trying to wipe it out? So the prebiotics come much later and they're always food-based. We have no need for nutritional supplement-based prebiotics. For the most part, they're very cheap. They use inulin, they use chicory, and they use things that aggravate the gut, not help it. Again, I'm working from a clinical perspective. You can see whatever you want to from literature, from books, but does that person practice with real world people? Do they practice with real life people? Can they see feedback? And so that's what we do. Okay, next up. Edward. Hi, Dr. Ball. Big fan of your podcast. And I did actually already ask you a question recently relating to LPR and how to treat it. You were kind enough to respond. And as always, you gave excellent advice. But I have one follow-up question, if it's not too cheeky. You mentioned candida as a possible factor in LPR. So for anyone who doesn't know what LPR is, let's just take a minor step back so we can give everyone a, a little background. And LPR is actually something to do with the sphincter's from the stomach all the way up to the back of the throat. And it goes along with GERD for a lot of the time. So LPR actually stands for laryngopharyngeal reflux. And so it's basically like silent reflux. It can lead to a lot of issues though. And uh, you know, a lot of those issues can still be unknown to a lot of people. Meaning like you start to get a little hoarse, you know, your voice starts to sound a little hoarse, a little more trouble breathing, you start to gain a little bit more weight. You can't swallow your food as well. You find yourself clearing your throat, trouble swallowing, you know, all these things can be that silent reflex. So it's very, very common. So Edward goes on and on to talk about, and again, you can always read everyone's question just by going to today's show, which is 470. And he goes on to talk about all the different um, fungal-based issues he's had in the past. This is someone who clearly looks like they have candida-based issues. They've done some candida-based protocols before, but had to ease off the antifungals because it was, it was just too much. They had a lot of die-off symptoms. So Edward, this is my answer. What I would recommend just if I was in your position, again, I can't give medical advice, but if I was in your position, what I would say is I would complete our candida and bacterial protocol and I would just do it slowly, which means this, you're given the 12-week protocol, but you can complete it a little slower, meaning like you can just add one product at a time. You can do it at just one capsule instead of the two capsules. And you can do, you can add a new product every three to five days once you make sure that the first product doesn't give you any die-off. Now, usually nine out of 10 people, no die-off, no issues at all, but maybe you're one, the one out of 10. And that's okay too. It doesn't mean that it's not right for you. It just means that you have to go slower and that's fine. Just use one product, use it every four, three to five days. Then after the five days is up, add the next product. And again, just start at one cap after three days, no issues, go to the two caps. Then if there's no issues there, then move to the next product. And then you just ease in. That's called titration. It's a very safe way. It's a very gentle way to do it. So Edward, hopefully that helps as well. And that also comes with our nutrition plan, our shopping list. It's really, really simple. We keep it super simple, straightforward. Again, a lot of people are going through it right now and they're a part of the Cabral support group. Just go to cabralsupportgroup.com. Completely free to join. It's a Facebook group. No charge at all. And we help to walk you through things. Very, very supportive group. Great group of people. And if you're not positive, then you can't be a part of the group. That's just the way it is. Okay. Kevin's up next. Dr. Brawl, recently our four-year-old daughter was diagnosed with strep throat and was prescribed an antibiotic. And it occurred to us, we know to avoid these, but A, what would you do instead? And B, are there some fairly common ailments that you suggest going ahead with the antibiotic? Thank you for all you do. Okay, Kevin. So, um, you know, just keep in mind that I grew up taking an antibiotic for everything. Like, I mean, if I had the common cold, antibiotic. If, I don't know, my head hurt a little bit, antibiotic. If I had like one pimple on my face, antibiotic. You know, that's just the way it was. And it destroyed my overall health. So in my opinion, you need to take an antibiotic if your life is in danger. And that goes for children as well. So am I saying not to take an antibiotic? Absolutely not. Did not say that. So let me clarify. If you or your child's life is in danger, you take the antibiotic and you do it happily because it will save their life, okay? So remember, if a child is weak, if they're listless, if they lose their appetite, if they're just always sleeping, if something's clearly wrong, if they have an uncontrollable fever, please seek out medical attention. My job is to help people and I have to make sure that I never hurt anyone and that's obviously the goal. Again, I'm not giving medical advice. I'm telling you what I do in my practice and I'm telling you what I do with my own family. I have two daughters. They are almost three and almost five years old. And I would never do anything to cause any harm to them ever. And, you know, and um, I always leave myself open to the possibility that they might need antibiotics one day. And they have not yet. We've always treated them naturally, my wife and I, and she's on board and she's 
a great, great non-practicing natural health practitioner because she knows so much. And, you know, I've been able to pass it along to her as well. And and she's a quick study. So what we do is we do our children's immune-based protocol, the same one that you see on the website. But we also add vitamin C to their water when they are not feeling well. And that when they have strep throat or they get something like strep throat, they're using natural antibiotics. So what would a natural antibiotic be for strep throat? Well, adding a little bit of cayenne pepper, so about an eighth of a teaspoon to a fourth of a teaspoon, test it yourself, in a little bit of lemon, a little bit of maple syrup, and a little bit of water. And what you want to do is try to get them to gargle. If they're too young, then just have them swallow it. What you need to do is to get this to coat the back of the throat. And somehow, you need to get some cayenne pepper and some garlic back there. Those are the two things that have been shown to help kill strep. So there are sprays out there. Dr. Schultz has a spray. Herb Farm has a spray. We don't sell these because we can't sell everything. It's just, it's not possible. Another great thing to do is mix some raw honey with a little bit of cayenne pepper and actually paint the back of the tonsils or the back of the throat. So the uvula is that little hangy thing in the back of the throat. It looks like a little punching bag. And you want to try to coat everything you can, again, with a little bit of a spray. And you can make your own little lemon, cayenne, pepper, maple syrup spray, or however you want to do it, and spray in the back of your throat. Test it on yourself first. That will work tremendously well. And you still have to do it. So that's the hard thing about kids in natural health. You need to do it two to three times a day minimum, right? Three to four times a day is ideal when they're at their most sick. And remember, everybody's kids get sick. My girls are sick somewhere around probably six times to eight times a year. That's actually totally normal. Like that's completely normal. They're exposed to a virus, a bacteria. They get sick, their immune system fights it, and they get better. Like that is completely normal. As an adult, you get sick maybe two to three times a year totally normal. You know, if I'm sick, well, it's not uncommon. I'm work around sick people. And if I haven't been exposed to that before, my immune system mounts a response within 24 hours with those white blood cells. They fight it. I give them some help with some vitamin C, some zinc, some grapefruit seed extract, some echinacea, whatever it might be. And then our body boosts those white blood cells and we get better. So that's what I would do with um, strep throat. And again, there's, there's a natural remedy for all of these things. And so, of course, that's what I recommend. But I want you to do whatever you feel is best. And if you feel antibiotics is best for your child, no problem at all. Just make sure that they get on that clean gut probiotic right away. Try to just keep a bottle on hand. That's what we do. Remember, my, my house looks like this natural pharmacy. It's just on hand. Even though I'm down the street from my wellness center, I want everything on hand just in case they need it. And that goes for the adult protocol and children's protocol. And so the clean gut probiotic... What you do is you just take that six hours away from antibiotics, half a capsule twice a day for children or a full capsule twice a day for adults. Okay. Tanya is our last question. She's up next. She's saying, hi, Dr. Rawl. Thank you again for all your fantastic work. I have written into you before and your response was extremely helpful. Thank you, Tanya. I'm glad that that helped. Also, I have done the Dr. Rawl detox and recently received the food sensitivity test for my birthday which I cannot wait to take. That is a great birthday gift. I, that's actually a really good idea. Uh, so also, I apologize for this very long and detailed question. I'm writing on behalf of my mother. She's almost 50 years old. And for the last 30 years, she has suffered from chronic urinary tract infections about three to four times per year. Otherwise, she's quite healthy. She has a couple ounces of cheese every day. She consumes a lot of wheat. I'm just sorry. I'm just going uh, through the the cliff notes here. She gets UTI flare-ups, urinary tract infection flare-ups after intercourse. And her symptoms can be debilitating. She goes on antibiotics afterwards. Her MDs never um, offered any other recommendations. What do you suggest for dealing with her UTIs and some of her multiple cysts? Knowing my mother, doing a restrictive detox would be very difficult for her. She has also mentioned having circulatory issues with occasional numbness in her limbs. Thank you so much in advance. Okay, Tanya, my response is this, is that sometimes every, every once in a while, it might be one out of 100 people, they come in or I speak with them over Skype, which we probably doing more and more now of, and they say, okay, I'm looking to fix this, this, and this, but I don't want to change my diet. I don't want to give up alcohol. I don't want to give up this. And I say like, I completely understand where you're coming from, but food's the most important thing. Without changing food, we usually can't change how the human body functions because our body functions based on the food that we put in. So it's kind of like the input that you put in 
is what you get out. So if your mom won't eliminate dairy, the number one food sensitivity in all humans, literally, the number one IgG food sensitivity at least, and she won't cut out wheat, one of the most inflammatory foods there are, which also contains yeast, and she's dealing with basically yeast-based infections with urinary tract infections, which is also bacterial-based. Keep in mind that a lot of that bacteria for the vaginal canal is shared with the intestines. And if we don't fix the intestinal flora, how are we supposed to fix the vaginal flora? So it's a tough situation. I know you're asking for your mom as well. And of course, we both want to help your mom. I want to help her and so do you. So my recommendation, of course, is to do our urinary tract protocol, which helps to kill a lot of that bacteria in the first place. But also, my biggest recommendation is for her to follow the candida protocol. And why would I recommend the candida and bacterial protocol? Well, because a urinary tract infection is an infection based on E. coli and other types of bacteria and other types. So it's not just E. coli that's entering the bladder and also can travel all the way up actually to the kidneys. And so it can turn into a serious kidney infection as well. So a lot of times when it actually makes it to the kidneys, then antibiotics would probably be a very smart idea because we don't want to actually damage the kidneys. So, there, you know, obviously, if you catch it fast enough, the urinary tract um, healthy protocol that we recommend, I mean, it works phenomenally well, but of course you have to have it on hand. So that's, that's the first step is you need these products on hand because they don't help you three days later. So that is why if you suffer from something or you know that it happens every once in a while, my highest recommendation is just to keep these things on hand. I mean, it's short money for like 60 or $70. I know it, it might seem like a lot in the beginning, but not when you actually get the urinary tract infection, of course. So the candida and bacterial protocol help to rebalance the gut flora, which then helps to rebalance the vaginal flora. Now, in the meantime, your mom, before intercourse, she can actually use coconut oil vaginally. And the coconut oil is going to be a nice antimicrobial, antibacterial, and it will help to balance the pH. Because remember, a woman's vaginal flora shifts a little bit from acid, which it should be, to a little bit more alkaline in the presence of sperm and sometimes spermicide and sometimes condoms and things like that. So we do have to just be cognizant and careful of that. But then also after intercourse, your mom could use a, an acidophilus, so lactobacillus acidophilus dairy-free suppository. And, and we don't sell that separately, but it's pretty easy to find a dairy-free lactobacillus acidophilus. Or you could use the Femicology as well. And the Femicology is a great product uh, too. So that would be my answer. And you know, it's like most things, your mom has a lot going on right now she would absolutely benefit from sitting down with a functional medicine practitioner, whether it be a naturopathic doctor or other functional medicine uh, practitioner, to help her with a lot of these issues because not all of it's just very straightforward. I'm giving you a good place to get started. And the, the candida and bacterial protocol will also teach your mom how to eat and live a healthier lifestyle and still be able to do a cheat meal once a week of whatever she enjoys. That's okay as well. But this is also lifestyle based. And so again, if we want long term results for your mom, we want to start to move in that healthier direction. And your mom's 49 years old, right? So if she's 49 years old, she still has a lot of life to live. So let's get her healthy now so that she can live another 40, 50 years in in really good health. So again, she could live double the amount of time that she's been on earth right now if she does things smartly, does things healthily. So that's my recommendation. Sorry, I can't give you the uh, magic bullet. I don't own the magic bullet. I don't own the magic pill. Obviously, I'm joking, but we all want that. I wanted that myself. But the truth is that we all become better, healthier people people who can then help others and pass this information along once we've gone through the process ourselves. And to be honest, it's a lot more enjoyable. I love living a healthy lifestyle now. I really do. Yesterday, I talked about, I believe it was yesterday, about the organic gardening that I've gotten into, uh, just all the healthy. I love juicing and making smoothies and just all of these things. Really enjoy it. It's fun. It's a great outlet. And you know, everyone's going to spend their money on something. Why not spend it on your health in general? That's my philosophy. So thank you everyone for tuning in to another Cabral Concept. Appreciate each and every one of your listens and be sure to join me tomorrow where we answer another seven or eight of our community questions. Take care, everyone. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. 
So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.